A Hat in Time, one of the most popular indie games to come out of 2017. A game with so much style and charm with incredible music to back it up. A game about exploring and platforming to gather materials to create new hats which will grant you different abilities required to progress. What if they're not required? What if you could beat A Hat in Time without using the core gameplay mechanic? Can you beat A Hat in Time without using hats? Okay, so to clarify, yes you do have a permanent hat equipped so for this challenge I'll only be using the starting hat and also try not to use its ability. Not that it'd be much use since it just lets you see the current main goal. Um, with that out of the way, let's begin. The game begins as normal with Hat Kid waking up and having the Mafia break in the window sucking out all the time pieces and the first level begins. Things started off normally by following Mustache Kid through the streets and then I stopped to collect the safe token things because I forgot what the safes contain. It was yarn. The material used for making hats. Useless. After following her to a tower, she tells us if we climb up there, we'll join a rebellion as well as show us the location of the first timepiece. So I climb the tower, join the rebellion, take out some mafia, and collect the first timepiece. Okay, so I feel this is a good time to explain timepieces. They're the main collectible of the game and what's required to progress. There are 40 in total, but only 25 are needed to progress. So, as long as I'm able to get at least 25 hat free, beating the game should be possible. The next level begins and I head off to save Mustache Kid from some Mafia with TNT barrels. After flexing on them by dodging their barrels with ease, I brutally murder them and claim the second timepiece. Mustache Kid says we should go raid the Mafia headquarters, as they took a bunch of timepieces there. So we high five, become friends, and come up with a plan to take out the Mafia. Are you ready to take down some Mafia? Let's do it! I'm psyched! Let's go over the plan. All assaults need a good plan, or it'll be a flop. First, we strangle them, choke them, and watch them beg for mercy. That'll show them. No, wait, strangling is too kind. We smash them together into mush and put their remains in a jar. Then, we sell the jar for pocket money. That'll be the ultimate salt in the wound. <clears throat> but first, we have to uh, make it through their Mafia HQ. Once we find and dethrone the Mafia boss, the rest will follow. Then our mush and jar party will be no problem. We've got to get you geared up. Your hat is basic. And we don't do basic in this gang. Yarn can be found around Mafia Town and used to stitch new hats if you're crafty. I've collected one for you. You need more yarn for some hats than others. I guess being creative isn't free. <laughs> so keep an eye out for yarn. Now you're a killing machine. Let's go get them. Josh Kid insulted my hat and gave me yarn, but luckily I could just exit the menu. So after that, I moved on to Act 3. She came from outer space. And here's where I decided to try to do some platforming without the right hat. As you can see, I meant to use the ice hat here to launch myself across the gap, but I'm never going to get the ice hat, so I decided to see how good Hat Kid's controls were, and to my surprise, it worked. It was just a camera, so it was entirely useless for this run, but it proved I could make seemingly impossible jumps. So, progressing to the level, we come across this guy. It's... it's slimy space alien! Oh, that's not very nice. It's just a donkey. After chasing this guy and scaring him for a bit, I miss a jump by bumping into him. After forcing him to submit to my will, he gives me the timepiece, and we're off to the next chapter, Down with the Mafia. After shooting myself into the sky and taking out a few Mafia guys from Mustache Kid, we head inside to take down the Mafia boss. Nothing out of the ordinary happened here. Just went up to the rafters, collected a bucket of something, and I could look up what it is, but honestly I can't be bothered, and then dropped it on a button and took a key. I had a moment where I kept pushing forward on the analog stick to get through the door, but just to the camera changing, I kept entering and leaving before Hack had finally gained their senses and then walked into the freezer. From here, they platformed up and through a vent and encountered the Mafia boss. I had to fight a couple of his guns to get to him, and the fight began. I had a lot of practice on this fight when I did a hitless run a while ago, so I knew all the attacks and how to dodge them, but of course, that is not the take pains anyway. But then, Mustache Kid made a fatal mistake. So what do these things do anyway? Are they some sort of rare collector's item for nerds? Oh. 
Are they some sort of wreck? Wait, huh? Whoa, what? Well, did, um, did you know about this? This is crazy! Do you even realise what could be done with these? We can make it so that you never got punched in the face by the Mafia that one time. We could beat up the Mafia, travel back in time, and then beat them up again. No, wait. We can make it so the Mafia never arrived on the island. Wait, wait, wait. Even better. We could be crime-fighting time travellers. All right. Sounds cool. Okay, so Hat Kid says no to this, and Mustache Kid vows to find the rest of the time pieces and fate evil without you. And also, picture pocket. And with this, we unlock a new area and begin chapter 2. Once we head inside Dead Bird Studio, I found a fellow Scotsman and came to the realisation that I've been pronouncing word rang this whole video. So after this, I head up to the vent that was kindly pointed out to us and head into the studio. The rest of this level played normally, so we head through the studio, get a bird passport, and put the most amount of effort into fixing the photo. And then, I legally become a feathery. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Oh, you can't just jump in and fiddle with the annual bird movie awards! That's fraud! Fraud! Hey everyone! We've got a fraudster over here! Oh. Where are my owl guards at? Oh, why are the owls so darn useless? Uh. Alright, listen here, lass. You're in big trouble. If you're helping crooked DJ Grooves rig the awards, and I can't take you to jail, then you've got to help me even the score. That's right! You're got to be the star of my movies, too! Here, hold our newest prop, practice showing it off and bring it to my movie set tomorrow. You got that? Don't be late! David Tennant gives me the fifth timepiece, so now we're a fifth of the way through. So both birds ask me to star in their movies, and being the patriotic Scotsman that I am, I chose one of my favourite levels in the game. Murder on the Owl Express. Head through the train carriage, and these express owls asked me a bunch of random questions, and I answer with extreme maturity. Express owls all have parts of our body we're ashamed of. This is why some owls choose to pluck their feathers. Which body part of yours are you the most ashamed of, fellow express owl? <laughs> Oh, poor Express Owl. You shouldn't be ashamed of your... Uh, uh, but you'd better get your... Uh, 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 checked out by a doctor. I read online. It could be a sign of bird flu. If I got to the front of the train, I technically get a new hat. But it's just a reskin of the default hat, so it doesn't count. Then a phone rings, telling me my uncle's sister, Billy, is in danger. So I head to the back of the train. I can't believe someone would murder one of the Express Owl! And I can't believe even more that it's your uncle's sister! What do you have to say for yourself? Ooh, you're giving me the quiet treatment, eh? That's what a murderer would do. Leave this case to us. We're Kaw, the Crow Agent Watch. We've been monitoring everyone on this train since the last station. We'll be searching the entire train for evidence. No one is allowed to go outside of this wagon. What? I can't even walk around in my own train! Oh, how dare ya! Once the clock hits midnight, We'll get off at the station with the murderer in cuffs. 
Stay here while we investigate further. The Expressos turned out to be crows all along, which blew my freaking mind. And then they say we can't leave until they collect evidence, and from here the race is on to find out the murderer. After channeling my inner solid snake and sneaking around collecting evidence, I had enough proof to say that without a doubt the murderer was David Tennant. Me? I can't be the murderer. I'm the conductor. What? No, seriously, what? No, it wasn't me. Stop. Cut it out. All right, fine. It was me. I did it. Here, you're happy. Okay, I'm gonna stop overexemplifying my Scottish voice anymore. Okay, <laughs> back to the video. I love this level. It's so cool. You have to gather clues who could be the murderer, and in the end, it doesn't even matter because whoever you pick turns out to be the murderer. Not to mention all the fun scenes, which I can't cover otherwise, this video will be too long, but seriously, I'd, I'd buy this game just for this level. It, it's that good to me. Okay, so in the efforts of not taking up too much time, I'll just say that Deadbird Studio gave me no problems and basically acted as a normal playthrough. I didn't have to do some DJ group levels, much to my dismay, because for some reason, I don't know why, but I couldn't do the conductor levels after Earl Express, which was weird. So I went back to Earl Express, did a time rip instead, which got me another timepiece pretty easily, and by doing this, I could unlock Train Rush. But to do that, I need the grappling hook badge. Okay, so at this point, I was trying to also do no badges, which might have been possible, but most of my favourite levels required it. So I patched that idea pretty quickly. So, instead of doing DJ Groove levels, I instead went back to Mafia Town to wrap up everything. Nothing insane happened, so I'll skip the details, just know that I was now sitting at 12 time pieces from doing some time rips and another level or two. I finally decided to bite the bullet and do DJ Groove's missions. They weren't that interesting to me, just a parade or something, which was easy enough. Anyway, decided to go meet my favourite character in the Subcon Forest. After dealing with some fire spirits, he sends me off to clean out the subcom well, as well as give me another contract to investigate Luigi's mansion. After giving me another timepiece, I unlock the second last area, so now I have all worlds unlocked to me and I can tackle levels at will, which should give me a lot more wiggle room when it comes to no hats. Probably a spoiler, but it's about to get challenging. 
So I decided to clean out the subcom well, which didn't go well at first because I was still deciding not to use badges, and this level required the grappling hook badge. But after realising no hats were already enough of a challenge, I used the badge, cleaned out the well, and got another timepiece, so now I only need 10 more. And now I have the grappling hook, I can go back and do train rush! After getting this timepiece, I unlocked the final level of Dead Bird Studio. The problem is, DJ Groves has more points, so I was just gonna have to accept that that numbskull was gonna win. Doing another time rift got me another. DJ Groves just straight up gives us the timepiece in the next level. Okay, so let's head back to Dead Bird Studio. After heading down an elevator, we go back into sneak mode in order to blow the cover on this thing. We then come across DJ Pecknick and have an epic battle, ending in him wanting to talk. Let's have a little heart to heart. Have a seat, darling. <laughs> Ever since you arrived on this planet, these town pieces have fallen from the sky. Now, I can understand if you feel they belong to you, darling. I understand. But did you know they allow for rewinding time? With one timepiece, I could reclaim all the trophies that belong to me, darling. Every single trophy I've lost to the conductor where he has cheated his way to victory. I can't prove it, darling, but I'm certain the conductor has been manipulating everything to make sure I never win. I just need one timepiece to fix years of cheating and fraud. He assumes just because David Tennant makes better films than him that he must be cheating. After turning that chump down, we continue to fight, this time with a bomb strapped to me. Just before it blows my homie, the conductor cuts the fuse, saves me from the bomb, which allows me to finish that twat off once and for all. I quickly went back to Mafia City to do the next time rift and became a level 100 boss. Nothing really a note for this challenge yet. And with that, I began chapter 4, Alpine Skyline. After climbing a mountain and ascending up a zipline and blowing some horns, I head off towards the sizzling lava pit. I shot myself into the lava cake, started to ascend. I got slightly worried when I saw the platforms and even the masked floor, but I realised they were just for yarn and collected the timepiece. By this point I was getting pretty confident I'd complete this challenge because all hats were just used for so far was optional collectibles like yarn and such, but maybe I shouldn't have been so confident since the first real test was about to happen. I headed over in the direction of the birdhouse, blew another horn, opened another path, and got to Yellow Band Hills, and immediately things started to look bad. You see this box here? It expects me to blow it up using one of my hats to progress. So with that out of the equation, it was time to put Hat Kid's movements to the test. After trying to run up the fence for a bit, I noticed that there was a gap off to the left which allowed me to jump from the box to climb up. Okay, first obstacle down. 
when it wouldn't be the last. Because not even a minute later and I'm faced with an even tougher obstacle. Two boxes, holding up a path that I need to use. So after trying to run up the boxes a few times but to no avail, I tried running up the pole in a last ditch effort to do this and lo and behold, it actually freaking worked. That has to be the last one, right? Right? Apparently not, because the very next obstacle is seemingly impassable. I mean, just look at this for God's sake, look at this. And yes, I do use the hats ability here to try and get a look at what was happening. Not that it helped much, but if you want to say I failed the challenge, go ahead. But I'll just say that the lengths I went to to complete this exceed the use of the basic hat. So I pull out from my way around the side to see if I can maybe get a better height advantage at it. It was blocked by crates at the top of the ladder, which was just great. Luckily I used my massive brain to strategically jump around the side, which allowed me to get onto a platform a little closer to my goal. The jump still seemed impossible, but I wasn't ready to quit quite yet. Let's just say, my first attempt flopped. On my second attempt, I got really close, much to my surprise. So I kept trying, and on my fourth, or fifth, this happened. I had done it. I was so excited. This was what I was hoping for, this challenge was finally turning out to what I thought it would be. I loved playing this section, it was so fun to have my hopes pre proceeding crushed, but still find a way to proceed anyway because Hat Kid controls just so well. <laughs> anyway, I got to the birdhouse, got the timepiece, and now I was at 22. Just three more. After conquering the seemingly impossible, I decided to try going for the Twilight Belt, but this one actually was impossible. I couldn't even get to the place. So I went to the windmill, nothing out of the ordinary happened, got the timepiece, decided to head back to Subquent Forest, visit Luigi's Mansion, and as much as I love this level, the video is getting too long for me to go into detail about what happened there. So, I got the timepiece from the mansion, bought a Honda toilet, and finally, got all the timepieces I needed to get to the final level. Here we go! that kid's spaceship without the alarms going off. I bet she's collected a ton more timepieces than I have. Now where does she keep them? Jackpot! This must be where she stores them all. Time to mess with time a little. Now I wanted to fight my favourite boss in the game, but I hadn't unlocked the finale in the Subcon Forest, so I decided just to head off and just try and beat the game. Okay, so I got upstairs and immediately cried. This room is meant to check if you have the um, hats required for the final level by making you use three, even just to access the final level. Is this where it ends? Can I really go no further? Nah, I literally solved it in my first attempt by jumping over the gate from a grandfather clock in the corner. And with that, the final level begins, after it tells me I'm missing a key item. Fuck it! First obstacle pretends itself when I'm inside and I'm almost immediately required to use the ice cap. Well, I managed to get over it by damage boosting across the lava, so that wasn't too bad. Next obstacle is a massive gap with a massive box blocking the pillar. And I'll be honest, I got past this one by complete luck. I fell off the pillar, kept bouncing forward, and the game teleported me onto the platform I was trying to get on. I was able to replicate this trick, so I guess the game is trying to put you back on the platform as soon as you fell off, but who knows. Soon, I came to the point I couldn't get past. Things were looking well. I had gotten this far and just one section away from the final boss. And then this magical wall faded in. A wall you need a mask to pass through. A mask I didn't have or couldn't use even if I wanted to. I tried for half an hour to bash into various walls in hopes of clipping through it, but it was hopeless. I I gave up. For a couple months, 
But after seeing a video on YouTube of the most perfect glitch for my scenario, I tried to find the original video, but it took months for me to find it in the first place, and I'll, if I ever find it, I'll link it in the description. But anyway, the, the start of this level, you go left, there's a tear in the geometry, which allows you to perfectly time a dash through and perfectly damage boost onto a small bit of geometry jutting out the wall where you can wall run between two pieces of geometry and get to the top of the map which allows me to drop down behind the barrier and do my previous mentioned lava boost to get into the next area. This is so perfect I have no words. The only problem is it's insanely hard to pull off. It took me months of trying but eventually It's the thrill of one more kill, the last one to fall. Who we'll never sacrificed their will? Don't ever look back on the world closing in. Be only attack with your will. And with that, I've proved that it is possible to beat a hat in time, using only the default hat. I had a lot of fun making this video. A hat in time is one of my favourite games of all time and I'm so glad I could make this video. I actually recorded the footage for this last year but due to some personal issues, I've never had the motivation to work any further on it. But um, I hope you enjoyed now that it's finally here. I'm going to try and make my return to YouTube. So. Hopefully you see new videos from me soon. I have a lot of footage from different things, it's just editing I need to do. So that's it, see you in the next video.